Hey everyone, we got a bit of a messy question, so let's dive in. The statement reads, given the vector potential AR written in the integral formulation, check that this is consistent with del dot A equals zero by applying the divergence. B, check that this is consistent with B equal mu naught over four pi integral J cross uh, script R hat over script R squared D tau prime by applying the curl and then c check that this is consistent with uh del squared a equals negative mu naught j by applying the laplacian all right so this first one is the messiest of the bunch so we'll take it a little bit slower um when applying the divergence we apply it to both sides and we see that uh del dot a is equal to del dot the integral but what we really need to take the derivative of is the argument. So we shift that inside the integral. Now notice that inside we have the divergence as an integrand. And this immediately should make us think that we want to apply the divergence theorem. However, we note that the integral is in terms of primed coordinates. And the uh, del operator is in unprimed coordinates. So in order to apply the divergence theorem, we need to convert this into a prime del operator. And we can do that because the script R is a function of R and R prime. And so we can uh, use the same setup and substitute in um, the prime coordinate system. How we do this is we write out the product rule for the divergence del dot J over R is equal to one over script R times the divergence of J plus J times the uh, del of 1 over r. And now we do the same thing, but we apply the prime coordinate system. Okay, we see we have a couple colors here, blue, red, and purple. That'll help in the next slide. All right, so first, let's argue here. The first term in that uh, first product rule is 0 because j r prime is a function of the source coordinate, i.e. the prime coordinate, not the field coordinate, the unprime coordinate. So when I'm taking the derivative of the unprime coordinate it with the, and my function is uh, made of prime coordinates, it equals zero. Pretty simple there. Um, in the prime coordinates, the second product rule, it's also zero because in order to understand magnetostatics, we said that the currents were steady. Therefore, we don't have any divergence of the current because it's a constant and the derivative of a constant is zero. So... Fast forward, now that those divergence with j's are zero, all we're left with is del dot, the one over script r. But we know that script r is r minus r prime. So then we can write that the del operator of one over script r is equal to negative del prime one over script r. Okay, because the negative will cancel, but we still get the same thing. So when we're writing this, we go back to product rule one, and we see that we have a blue zero there, which is what we argued before from the constant derivative. And then we have minus, and we substitute in that del over del of one over r is equal to negative del prime of one over r. But that's exactly what we see in the second uh, product rule. So that tells us that by keeping the negative there and substituting in, that's equal to negative del prime uh, dotted with j over script r. Lo and behold, now that we have the divergence in terms of a prime coordinate system, we can now apply the divergence theorem, and we get uh, a negative out front, but we get negative mu naught over 4 pi uh, contour integral j over r dotted with dA prime. And since this now tells us that we have an integral over the surface surrounding all the currents, we know that in this scenario that j is equal to 0 on the surface, therefore... This whole thing via the divergence theorem must equal zero. Whew, that was a headache. The next two are pretty simple and they're all one page, so we'll just chug through them. Same thing here, applying the curl. We see that we just want to take the curl of the uh, integrand. To do that, we again apply the product rule, but note on the curl product rule, we have a negative between them. Um, again, we can argue from the foundations that uh, del cross j equals zero since j is not a function of r and uh, it's actually a function of uh, r prime which we find in the definition but also we know from chapter one that the derivative or del 
operating on one over script r is equal to the uh, negative r hat over script r squared. It's just a quotient rule, but in the r hat direction. Okay, so then substituting that in, we see here that we have exactly what we expected. Mu naught over 4 pi integral j cross r hat over r squared d tau squared, which is exactly what the integral for the magnetic field was. So that checks out. Now applying the Laplacian, again, we know we're going to have to apply it to both sides, move it inside the integral. Now we have a product rule that we can see uh, is pretty uh, synonymous with this question. Um, once again, J is a constant as far as differentiation goes with respect to R is concerned. So that first term goes to zero. And we remember that del squared of 1 over R from chapter 1 was equal to negative 4 pi d cubed, the direct delta function. So put that in. We see that the delta function exclamates us to the point of zero. So that's why we can evaluate J there. So we get J of R actually. Um, instead of r prime. So that's equal to uh, negative mu naught j because of the evaluation of the Dirac delta. And the 4 pi is canceled, so we're good there.